What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because if you guys didn't see too long ago I did a combos you need to know to play Phantom Knight in today's format. Well, here is the deck profile in today's video. I'm excited to show it off to you guys. If you do enjoy this video though, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I will say we're very close to 5,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can make it happen. I know we can make it happen. I believe in every single one of you. Check out all my social media. Links will be in the description below. That's really all I gotta say. Don't wanna make the intro too long. So with that, off to the video. Okay, so to get things started off with this deck profile, we are of course starting with triple Phantom Knights of Torn Scales, triple Silent Boots, double Ancient Cloak, one Gloves, as well as one Stained Greaves. I'm pretty sure this is the standard PK lineup, the standard ratios you all want to play. Of course, Torn Scales is one of your best normal summons outside of the tour guide. Torn Scales really is one of the best cards in the deck, especially the Graveyard Effect. It being able to recur itself is very, very powerful. Boots, we all know, is an extender. It also gets you to any of your traps, most likely the Fog Blade. And then Cloak is really what gets you into the boots a lot of times. So uh, yeah, this standard lineup is, I wouldn't change it at all. Stained Greaves is really, really good, especially in the mid to late game. It is a really good card when you've already used your other pk names and you need something to dump you can dump the stained greaves and set up for future boards right so that's why this card is really really good then you have triple tour guide of course now i do want to mention that i've seen a lot of builds start to play the predator plant engine because with the predator plant engine what's really nice about it is that you can search your fusion destiny and then you can skip the verte step right yes that's a really good play don't get me wrong the problem is it has the same issue as tour guide where it's like okay if you get impermed you're kind of just stuck with that monster which you can argue that hey both tour guide and and the predator plant uh what is it? it's not cobra it's um orphis scorpio uh scorpio has the same problem the problem is though is that orphis scorpio does require a card in hand to to discard for the effect but also in the mid to late game tour guide could be used as a normal summon let's say someone breaks your board your board gets broken whatever whatever you can normal summon a tour guide and special summon another tour guide from your deck whereas once you use the orphis scorpio the first time there's nothing else you're doing with it, right? And on top of that, in the mid to late game, if you draw the Orphis Scorpio, and like you've already used your Fusion Destiny, sure, you can search it, I guess, to deck thin, but what are you really getting out of it, if you know what I mean, right? This way, with the Tour Guide, in my opinion, you're not playing one more brick in the Cobra, and uh, just the BA monsters on their own are really good as well. So that's why I still like to stick with the Tour Guide over the Predator Plant. Yes, the ceiling for the Predator Plant is really high, because when you search the Fusion Destiny, it means you can make your plays a lot more aggressive. You don't have to go into the Verte, but I think Tour Guide is just a better option in the early game, but also in the mid to late game. Tour Guide is really, really strong. And of course, we're playing two BA monsters, both Graf and Seer. These are standard. Of course, you're playing these. Then for some extenders, we are playing one Psychic Wielder, one Psychic Tracker, uh, and double Kage Mucha Knight. So I wouldn't really change this at all. I really like these ratios. Now, I did want to actually try to start playing Itali maybe in the future builds, but I really like how this is playing out for me right now, especially with the Tour Guide and the Kage Mucha Knight. It works really, really well, so I like that. Then you're playing for more extenders. You're playing one Suchinoko and one Jackalope. So as you guys can see, you're playing the PK engine and mostly just extenders because you just need to rank three spam with this deck or level three spam, right? So that's why you want to play these. Of course, Jackalope, Suchinoko are really, really good as well. Then we're we're playing for the hand trap lineup we're playing triple ash blossom triple forbidden droplet which technically isn't the hand trap but you know what i mean it kind of fits into that same same idea of hand traps as well as triple imperm now i understand droplet is an expensive card do not worry you guys can play chalice okay I, that's why i have the chalices down here because i wanted to show you guys if you don't have access to droplet you guys can just play Forbidden Chalice. It's not a big issue. Um, Droplet is really, really strong, don't get me wrong, but if you guys don't have access to this, don't worry. It's not that the deck becomes infinitely worse without Droplet. Chalice is a really good replacement still. This card is really good. And the nice thing about Chalice, actually, sometimes, it happened to me a couple times in testing. Again, don't get used to this because it's probably not gonna happen that often, but you can Chalice your own monster to gain attack, and it helps you sometimes push for damage. The most recent one I remember, I think I was like 200 damage off of game. So I ended up chalicing my own monster in the battle phase to go for game. So chalice is really strong in that sense. So don't get me wrong. If you guys don't have droplets, you guys can play chalice as well. Imperm, of course, is very important. So you're going to be playing that. Then for the Fusion Destiny or the DPE package, we're playing one Dasher, one Celestial, as well as Triple Fusion Destiny. One Call by the Grave, of course, to dodge hand traps whenever you can. One Call by the Grave, just to dodge hand traps whenever you can. One Reinforcements of the Army, because all your PK monsters are Warriors. So Rota, of course, is you're playing in here. Double Triple Tactical Talent, so double TTT. The thing is, I wanted to play double originally, okay? So originally I was playing double Crossout with the Call by the Grave, so we didn't lose to hand traps. But the problem I found with that is, 
I had to play more hand traps, right? But the thing is, I didn't want to play cross out and then have to play like a Veiler or any other hand traps. So that's why I ended up playing triple tactical talents because I'm like, okay, if my opponent does hand trap me, then at least I have TTT to either get a card out of their hand, draw two cards, take control of a monster. TTT is also really, really strong going second. That's why I like this card. So yeah, you could argue you can play cross out. If you played cross out, maybe you would cut the droplets to fit in other hand traps. But uh, TTT is very important in the main deck, in my opinion, more so than cross out because this is just more consistent playing these three rather than when you're playing cross out, you have to play other hand traps, right? Which isn't bad per se, because drawing a Veiler in your hand is not bad. It's not like drawing another hand trap is a bad thing, but it just becomes really reliant because it's kind of like, okay, but my opponent now needs to have that hand trap, right? Whereas something like TTT is really good because it can go first when you're going first and your opponent hand traps you, or it can go second because if your opponent makes a board and they negate something or they use a monster effect on your turn, then you can TTT, right? That's why I really like this is really versatile. Then of course we're playing triple Phantom Knight's Fogblade, one Phantom Knight's Wing, and one Phantom Knight's of Shade Brigadine. This is just an extender for you. I wouldn't change this ratio at all. I really like this ratio. 44 cards you guys can see here in the main deck. The reason I'm playing 44 is because you never want to draw these. You never want to draw Celestial. You never want to draw Dasher. So that's why we're playing 44 cards. We don't want to draw these. And that's why you're playing so many extenders as well. Because even with 44, this, this deck is really, really consistent. I won't even lie to you. This deck is super, super consistent, even at 44. Then for the extra deck, we're playing one Levier. Now I will say that you could play a second one if you really wanted to span the Zeus over like the Downer Magician. However, I don't see myself making that play too often. So I do like to play the Downer Magician. I'll explain, I'll explain that in a minute, but yeah. So you could play two of this. I like to play one. It never really comes up the second one. So one's enough. I'm playing double Breaksword. Breaksword is definitely important enough to play at two. This card comes up very often. So you definitely wanna play two of this. One Evil Swarm Nightmare. This is for when you use your Breaksword, you can make your Nightmare. Nightmare is a really strong card. So I really like playing this. One Downer as well as one Zeus. Again, you could cut the Downer to play a second levy i think one levy is enough and i like to just slap the downer on top of it and then just slap the zeus okay so that's kind of like how i how i like to do it so you could argue that you don't need the downer and it's true you might not always need the downer uh so you could play around with that however you feel i just thought that one levy was enough so that's why i'm playing the one then we're playing one DPE, of course. And then for our Link lineup, we are playing a bunch of Link monsters, of course. So we're playing the Verte, of course, to get to the Fusion Destiny. Cherubini, one of the most important cards. This is the card that you always go into first. One uh, Bardish. Bardish is obviously really strong in PK. We got one Link Splatter. This is mostly for when you get uh, nibiru What can end up happening is if they Nibiru you, you can use the Link Splatter with the token and then try to make a Verte with the Link Splatter and something else. So that's why you want to be playing the Link Splatter. Then you have the IP Mascarena, the Unicorn, of course, for IP. A lot of the combos that I do go into IP into Apollo. So that's why I really like playing the Apollo. And then of course, one access code to OTK. So that's really it for the deck profile. I did want to say again that 44, trust me, you guys might be looking at it and be like, okay, this is over a 40 card main deck, but it is very consistent. And again, you never really want to draw these two because as soon as you draw these two, you're in a really bad spot. So yeah, you have no way of putting them back into the deck at the moment. At least if Phantasmi becomes really relevant in the format again, then maybe you could like cut it down because Phantasmi can put them back. But otherwise you don't want to draw these 44 cards in the main deck is perfectly fine. And again, if Droplets is a little bit expensive, which trust me, I know Droplets is pretty expensive. You guys can just play Chalice instead. Doesn't hurt the deck. I really like this card as well. So that is it for today's deck profile. Hope you guys did enjoy. I tried to give you guys a little bit of insight as to why I play the deck the way I do. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys all for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy today's video. Thank you guys all for being here. And with that, Benko, signing out. Peace.